All right, so the first game today, we're doing Group C, which is going to be uh, Vermin, Erbmon, and myself. And the first game today is going to be me versus Vermin on Radeon. So I'm probably going to let Keen mostly talk for my games, uh, and hopefully we can get another player in soon to help him with that, but I'll still give input like on my thought process and stuff as well, of course. Nice split from Vermin. Perfectly optimized so far, as far as I can tell. He's doing a little, uh... Do, does Protoss do the little, um, like, manual boost thing, too? I, only, I like the as far as I know, only the top right patch is, is the only one. Hey, what's up, Civil? What's up, Danny? I don't think I've been Doesn't streamed really my so games versus Erdmon. Sorry, go ahead. It, oh, I was just gonna say, it doesn't really matter so much in that. Uh, well, it does matter in GP if you're doing like, patch first, kind of, but... In ZVT, it, it, it's actually kind of significant for your timing. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a replay. Ugh. Even my first pylon was already late. It was like 160 minerals when I dropped my pylon. But not yeah. great. Yeah, um, actually, I remember watching. I went back and watched the, uh, the cast of um, my games the, from the other night. And, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> um, like you and Flying were both like noting that uh, my drone was like going out past my natural a little bit, but that yeah. was not um, just for your information. That was not any kind of like scouting thing. I'm just really rusty and <laughs> I, I just lost control of it. So. One of those games I had a really late hatch. Oh, Ermon said he'll join, so let me... Oh, hell yeah. Add him to the call real quick. What's up, Erb? Yo, what to do? Alright, so we're already in the first game, so... I'll just screen share on Discord for this one, and then you can join the call in the next one, or the replay in the next one. So do you, uh, do you tend to favor going Forge in general nowadays, or...? Uh, I do Forge when I'm feeling a little more lazy now, to be honest. Like, now that I've oh, yeah, kind of got right. a little more comfortable with it, but... I would prefer to do... I think I'll lose this probe, actually. I think I prefer oh, to do, uh... Gateway expand if I can, like if I'm feeling good enough for it. Ooh. Oh, okay. Yeah, I thought I thought he was gonna run by, but yeah. <laughs> I I legit only just learned. I was talking about this before. I only just learned like. Few weeks ago, that you can go 13 Nexus before cannon against Overpool. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, I, I never knew. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, I, I think it's a pretty significant uh, buff to do to that. But you lose the nine pool, right? Yeah, if you, uh, if you do the 13 Nexus. Yeah. Yeah, I try to do. Problem is I'm not great with like timings. I, I basically like look at it and I'm like, okay, does that look like a nine pool based on my minerals or what? Like that's pretty much the only way I know how to tell. Uh, I really gotta learn to like pay attention to my clock. Um, but that yeah, it's no board. Yeah, yeah, that too. Yeah. Um, my cannon placement was already not great because of the drone kind of getting in the way, and then it actually screwed me up a bit. Yeah, I'm actually surprised um, that Vermin is going 3 Hatch Hydra because, you know, he's sort of like a, you know, stock standard, like, macro player, so it's it's kind of good to see him incorporating a little bit more of an aggressive It's funny you style. say that. <laughs> he didn't play one macro game against me. Oh, damn spoilers. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> um, well, I mean, this, this doesn't have to be... A, like an all-in anyway, right? It's, yeah, it's yeah. still kind of a macro build, it's just an aggressive one, but um, yeah, I was just going to say, because of that cannon placement, it could be an issue later on mm -hmm. um, when the Hydra's get to your front door. 
Yeah, I mean, that, that cannon and, like, the spacing between, like, my gateway and stuff, like... I mean, I guess I can get... Can I even get a row? I don't even think I can with the gateway there, right? So, like, my... Um, it yeah. looks like that you should be able to fit a cannon in between the gateway and the cannon, right? Or am I... I don't think you can do it with the gateway, but the forge you can. Yeah, the forge I oh. can. I think the gateway is okay. actually one pixel too high. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, this this is like really suboptimal against Hydra. Yeah. But I mean, at least there's a, a ton of space in the natural on this map. Yeah, that's general, true. So. Even then, yeah, I guess I can still get like another two rows above that. It is kind of crazy. But here when I started making cannons was when I was like, oh god, this is terrible. Because I, I couldn't even make one on the left there, and I thought I could when I put <laughs> this cannon down. And this this was the moment I was like, I really hope he's not all enemy, because I have jack all for space here. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I did scout it early, and I held off on the Corsair for a while. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, getting that probe scout for free is, like, pretty significant. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like you have, like, perfect scouting information right now. Yeah, and he That's why the uh, speedling opener before the uh, three-hatch hydra became a thing, is to clear out any stray yeah. zealots and uh, probes. Yeah, being able to walk this in and just park this here, <laughs> I was so uh, comfortable yeah. this entire time because I know exactly what he was doing. I know, I'm, I'm surprised he didn't try to kill it with that Hydra that's at his, nat at his natural, because, like, mm -hmm. like, seeing those drones is so good. Yeah, because I see these drones, I know I don't need any more cannons, right? So I'm just sitting here on four cannons, like, this feels really good to me. I see, like, the layer timing, yeah. Yeah, and losing that gateway isn't that bad. No, it's not that big of a deal right now. I think he just realized that the probe was there the whole time. Yeah, it basically allowed me to skip the Corsair because, like, you still want to build the Corsair against Hydra, so you know if they're still making Cors or Hydra or if they're decking to Lair, if they're making drones, like, you want to still get that information. But because the probe gets to sit there, I get to skip the Corsair pretty much okay. for the entire game at that point. OP. <laughs> yes, Rotas is overpowered. The way they can just sit a probe in your base is so broken, dude. Dude, so broken. <laughs> Which is layer? Okay, we just... Oh, it's just about to finish, so... Mm. I should hit, like, uh, 9 minute. 9, 9.30. For Spire. And he's got the, uh... Macro hatches at the, uh, third, so... He's not in a terrible spot, but... If you hit with the timing, he's gonna be, like, walking a fine line. Yeah. And honestly, his Evo, what? Go ahead. Oh, his Evo is kind of late as well, so his yeah. like, plus one weapons is going to be really, really late. I feel that uh, FFE versus uh, Three Hatch Hydra is actually better for Protoss. Mm -hmm. It's when you go uh, the gateways where you can get caught off guard with things. But yeah, uh, looks like you're pushing across the map. Eyes are high tailing. No sunken. So you don't get that additional buffer, but... He's got all his units together, and you back off. Smart Protoss. How often do you say that? I'm all right. Well, you didn't throw your entire army away. Protosses are very known for doing that. Yeah. Yeah. You know. I mean, I, I think it's like a psychological thing, right? Because like, you have so many games where you just like shove your zealots in, and they like end up doing a shitload of damage. So you just like. Just think, like, damn, my zealots are sick as fuck. <laughs> yeah. You know what it was that that kind of changed a lot of, for me is talking with Crossy a bunch. The way Crossy explained it to me, what helped me a lot in this matchup since I talked to him about it, was um just going out on the map so that Zerg feels like they can't make drones. Yeah. That's, that's, that's like all it is, yeah. And mm -hmm. once I kind of wrapped my brain around that concept where it's like I don't necessarily have to do damage because by being on the map and making him feel pressure that is already some damage in and of itself yep and like you kind of see like during that entire time his drone count never changed it was at 40 the entire time and then only when he pushed me back did he finally start going back into making some drones 
<laughs> Ooh. Oh my god. Holy fuck. There's nice. Stuff. That was hot. Yeah, I think we caught him not looking there. Yeah, that was brutal. Got my 1-1. One, one. I made a second forge, but I'm not using it. I mean, I guess I did start my plus two attack on it a while ago. I kind of started to like double forge just because when you when you get those like two upgrades over Zerg, your army feels literally invincible. Yeah, those goons live forever. And honestly, I, this style is uh, really strong because you uh, double forge AK production. You mm. get this huge army. Yeah, you. Uh, you're running low in the main, but you can just double expand behind it if you can't push and win. Yeah. So. And one thing I, I started doing was I, I learned that you don't need to make so many probes on two bases Protoss in this matchup. Like, I, yeah. I used to overmake probes. I'd be sitting on, like, 65 sometimes on two base so that, like, when I expo, I can do a big transfer. But it's actually better to just cut the probes and then have the bigger army to secure the expos and then expand after you're mining out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can just resume the pro production when you start your third Texas anyway. Right. But like, if you're stuck on two bases for a while, you also don't want to mine out faster, so... I do think my, my second gas must have been really late, because I should have a lot more gas units than this right now. But I, I do have a tendency to take a late second gas for no reason. What's the main of Zerg? Oh, wait. Ooh. Matt sacrificing the observers. Good stuff. Yeah. And once those Dragoons get high count, they just do so much damage. And Protoss has got the arc and breaks the contain. Yeah, that was kind of a... Um... I, I think the game is honestly over here. No, it I, is. I, I can't. I can't imagine it going any, any longer. But um, I, that was kind of like an awkward position for the lurk contain, in my opinion. Like I feel like it should have been a little farther up because, like, the like part that the the goons were able to get on that lurker line was like pretty yeah. fucking wide. Like when you're doing that, you want to be able to constrict them into as small of a space as possible. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you want you want because goons are so like annoying to control in small spaces you want to tighten the quarter up as much as you can so that protoss is like struggling to get their goons and templar to move they want the way they want them to mm -hmm. yeah you're on his hatcheries storming the reinforcements this isn't looking too good once Protoss is able to get into a base like this, it's like fucking impossible to kill a big ball. Yeah, and when uh, Protoss is powering off the uh, the eight gates, if they break the contain, it's like you need like mass amounts of units back at home, if anything, because you know it's yeah, it, right at you. Yeah, it's always really it's like just being caught with your pants down when when the uh, contain gets broken. Yeah, it's definitely better if Zerg keeps their pants on, I feel like. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> well, it depends on the situation, I guess. It's taken a second, sorry. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, it's a battle that experience. Yeah. One day we'll have the technology. It's crazy, right? Like, StarCraft, Brood War, used to function so well back in the day when we were on dial-up. Yeah. Like... I would play non-laggy games when everybody had dial-up. <laughs> but now I can't get a game that's like above 12 turn rate playing 3v3 anymore. Every time Blizzard updates something, I just like brace myself for like what kind of new bug they're going to introduce. <laughs> I still can't get over when uh, there was that siege tank explosion bug where if they'd get pinched in a corner, they'd just blow up. It still happens, <laughs> doesn't it? Uh, does it still happen? I haven't seen it happen. I did it a few months ago. Oh, shit. Yeah, if you if you siege it on top of a building, then it just deletes the tank instead. Oh, if you, like, siege it, like, right as you land a building or something? Well, like, say, like, um... Like, I think the reason it happened to me was I built a turret or something, right? 
and then I like to siege my tank as the turret finished and the SCV went on top of the tank and pushed it on top of the turret as the siege mode went through, so it just removed the tank. Oh shit, damn. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, alright, that's cool. I didn't want that. Nope. That still happens? Uh, I don't know if it still does, because I haven't seen it in a long time actually, but I, I did do it a few months ago. Maybe longer than that, like six months ago. Why'd you choose a scout this way? Because uh, it feels closer to me. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I don't really know the actual correct way of scouting. To me, it's this is more in the middle, so I scout that one first and then top. Um, are you supposed to scout 12 o'clock first? Uh, it's what it would seem like. But, I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter. It seems like they're all the same uh, distance. I think it's about the I, same, yeah. Yeah, I just wasn't sure if there was logic behind it. No, I just... Just where it felt right? Yeah, just my gut tells me it's in the middle. That's pretty much it. <laughs> um, I will say on this map, I, I do feel like I'm almost forced to go forge expand on this map. Uh, because there's no ramp, like, so if I go gate expand, it feels like it's guaranteed that overpullings are gonna get inside my base. Vermin even making sixlings this time, which I do mm -hmm. scout. And here's where I make a pretty big mistake. It's funny because I just talked about this with someone, like, uh, with, like, Wolfix and a couple other people, about how if you see sixlings, it's better just to make the second cannon. Yep. Um, but I was like, well, it's over pull, so let me just pull probes, and then I pull way too many probes, and... <laughs> <laughs> there they are. And then I don't make the second cannon. Holy shit. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I pretty much killed myself for no reason. Like, Vermin makes six lings, and I just decided I don't deserve to be in this game anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a lot of probes. <laughs> yeah, I kind of... I don't know. It was like me panicking and just not thinking at all. It's it's trauma from Ling's getting inside my base. And I knew it as soon as I like pulled the probes, I was like, this is embarrassing. I was immediately embarrassed. Yeah, but it's like you're you're immediately ashamed, but then you like just it's like some sort of like trauma response where it's like, okay, I've I've already I've already committed to this, I I just have to keep going. Yeah. And then after that, my probes are literally not blocking anything in my wall, <laughs> and then I move them back before the zealot's ready, and these, yeah, it's just a nightmare. So these lings are actually just going to get inside, because oh I gosh. just do everything wrong, for no reason. <laughs> the, the worst of both worlds. I, I like self-destructed, but I was streaming, so this happens a lot, where like when I do something that I know is really dumb on stream, I become like so ashamed that I kind of completely lose focus. Yeah. 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 Welcome to the streaming life, bud. <laughs> yeah, I, I figure, like, even if you're just streaming alone, or if you're on, like, a voice call with friends or something, it's like, um, I feel like the quality of your games in general has to, like, go down really significantly, unless you're, like, really, really used to it. Mm -hmm. It's a rhythm thing. Yeah. So I don't even take that much damage from the lings, like I lost one probe, but the biggest issue is I was so distracted by this that I, I just never started my gas. So like I'm starting my gas almost, oh, yeah. like it's close to five minutes when I'm starting this gas. So even though I only lost one probe total, I've, I've taken a bunch of completely unnecessary damage from just a few lings being in my base. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, Vermin keeps... Uh blocking himself and putting down the spire. He's tried at least twice now, but he keeps <laughs> doing things in his uh, larva. There it goes. I'm supply blocked again right now as well. I mean, my, my core is going to be done by the time my Corsair is supposed to be out on the map. Yeah, this is going to turn into another situation like the um, Moonrise game from yesterday where you're just, you know, you're just like never going to get a tough arc ever. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just in like a really crappy spot right now. 
Yeah. But realistically, like, if I just multitasked better and would get out of my own head, it wouldn't have been that bad. Like, it still wasn't great, obviously, like, pulling out the pros is a bunch of damage. Um, letting the links inside sucks, but it, it technically wasn't that bad if I would just learn to relax a little bit. Breathe. Yeah, sometimes the psychological damage is worse than anything. Yeah. Like in my game against Exit, um, I was like so, like, disappointed that my fucking lings couldn't get through for like the third time <laughs> or whatever, and then he actually like got the bunker up. So I'm just like, fuck this shit. Like, I can't, can't deal with this. Yeah. So I, I made didn't even the... like stop to think about the situation. Sorry, go on. <clears throat> I made two cannons in the mineral line just because it felt like at this point. I basically conceded that if he goes Hydra, I'm just gonna die. So I was yeah. like, let me let me prep for Muta, because if he Hydra's, even if I prep for it, I'm just dead anyway. Right. Um. So I just went with the two cannons in the mineral line. But you um, saw the uh, you saw the lair and everything, right? Did I see the lair? I actually don't remember. I thought that you did, but maybe um, I'm just confused. I honestly can't remember if I did or not. He can play K-League when? He plays every week on... In theory. Yeah, every week. I mean, you just oh, see I'll how late play. everything is. Like, my plus one's like a third of the way. Not even. First Corsair comes out at seven and a half minutes. I'm pretty sure this is the first time I know that Spire's on the field. Maybe I did know. I was already starting plus one. Maybe I did actually know. Uh, uh, even if you didn't, I think it's like a reasonable choice. Because you can always cancel it anyway before it finishes. If you find out that it's just pure Hydra. Yeah, but you see he's making a bunch more Muta here. And one thing that's definitely hurting me a lot is... So because my Corsair was late, like all my like everything's late, and I lost that one Corsair to the the Muta, I should have like four Corsair right now, but instead mm -hmm. I'm almost at two. So realistically, I should have been really well prepped for the Muta, but just like all those mistakes in the early game are adding up to me being just really behind on everything now. Yeah, your plus one is also really, really late. Mm hmm Yeah. The, uh, which the, all this means. building placement, too, is, like, giving me anxiety going into the late game. It's, it's going to be, like... I was getting tilted too, don't worry. <laughs> Solving a puzzle to try to like make sure nothing is trapped. Oof. Yeah, missing those like two to three Corsair right now is What? They'll be back later, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just the, the Scourge experience. Yeah, that's that's rough. Yeah, that was that was uh me mentally breaking right there. <laughs> eh, things happen. <laughs> That was the moment, too, where I, like, really wanted to end my stream. I was like, guys, I, I don't want to be streaming anymore. I don't want to be here it's, anymore. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's when uh, pros turn off their webcam. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'd be, I mean, you know, I'll tell you before anybody else, and I know everybody would agree with me. I think my biggest issue with StarCraft is my my mental. Honestly, like, I, I get so flustered, and I have, like, no confidence right now. And it's just, like, totally eating into my gameplay. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely a thing. Jin, uh, Jinjin's a really good example of uh, psychological damage. Yeah. Yeah, I never really, like, rage 
at StarCraft or anything, but I just, like, get really disappointed in myself. Yeah, I'm the same way. <laughs> I get it. Like, if you watch my streams, most of my stream is me talking about how much I suck the entire ladder. <laughs> Until I backseat game you, of course. That, and that's when you get real good. That's true, that's actually when I get mad. When people yeah. are backseating <laughs> me, that I think that's the only time I start getting mad. As a... Whenever I get the left position, that, that bottom left mineral patch where you're like... I, I can never get the trick right. Like I, I always try to like line it up with the uh, the right one so it's like optimized, but it's like so fucking hard for me to do for some reason. Just uh, literally like make it go to like the right side of it, not even on the top. Yeah, and then it'll just fix itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you just go to the outside, it'll it'll take care of yeah. it. So now you know, King. Oh wait, are you are you talking about the the rightmost one, right? I'm talking yeah. about the one next to Oh, the, the one where you gotta micro it? Yeah, you have to you have to yeah, manually yeah. do it each time. Mm -hmm. Oh which patch is it? it the, the one right by the uh, bottom right? Yeah. Oh the the second um, gotcha. How do you do that then? Uh you have to like click like a, a, as it's going to that patch, you have to click the patch right next to it, like right as it gets there, and then click back so it, it will like mine from the rightmost edge of that patch. And it will have a faster turnaround. Hmm. But like the way it's mining right now, it's not optimized, which is usually what I do. I just like roll with it. Yeah, I just don't try. Miss gains. Sounds like a lot of effort. Yep, that's Zerg life, baby. <laughs> All right, so uh, OB pool, gas timing with uh, four lings, FFE, cross map. It's going to be a macro game, potentially. I mean, this gas timing, there's no way he'd follow it up with Hydra unless he uh, gets his probe kill and does a little sneaky. Yeah, whenever you go gas this early, it, it's usually like signaling that you're going to go lair. Yeah. Probably spire. Ooh, that's oh, it's a lot of drones. <laughs> <laughs> oh, holy crap. He really, really wanted this gas, yeah? Yeah, man. So I did forget a pylon here. Oh, we're supply blocked. Oh, nice. Everything's yeah. always about you, Ozzy, huh? No, I'm just, you know, pointing things out. We, we also <laughs> talked about Vermin pulling 16 drones to mine his gas. Yeah. That's one of those cool. things where I, I, I would want to like quit the game if I that <laughs> I'm I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> if we start over. Have you ever like uh spammed your drones and accidentally hit stop? Uh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, talk about pain. <laughs> uh, I think I would dreaming. What? I would actually just leave. <laughs> <laughs> so we went speed. Did you notice that? Uh, yeah, I didn't notice that. Okay. Not only did I not notice that, but because of the supply block, and then even after that, I was just late. My first zealot's just not coming out. And my walls, yeah, actually, I mean... my buildings are really far back. So, again, I was looking at my wall, and I was, like, super tilted about my wall. Yeah, yeah gonna... this is... Uh, if he went hydro, you'd be like... Yeah, I'm just dead again the Hydra. <laughs> well, no, the Lings alone could do a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. Thing is, though, because I, I don't think the probe... Did the probe get to the natural? Like, did, were you able to actually visually confirm that there is no lair? No, I did not. Okay, yeah, so that's... That's just a little sneaky thing, because he could have just made it... Made his lair out as a natural. Like, yeah, I just... Know. I never knew Speedling were being made at all. Like, had no idea. Oh god, and you don't even have another zealot cued right now. Yeah, I'm supply blocked again. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh no. Let's go! <laughs> god, this feels so good as a Zerg player though. Uh, yeah. But this is all 
This is me just not... This is like completely unforced errors, right? Two supply I'm blocks and my zealots not being in the wall, not making my second cannon, like... Yeah, like yeah, I literally had moved. a zealot outside of the wall. You moved them right, right <laughs> as he came in. I feel like the nine drones are kind of, it's kind of like deceptive because he does have two hatcheries still that he can just like quickly <clears> make like a bunch of rounds of drones for free and he doesn't have to worry about anything. Yeah. What you'd want to do is uh, say our DT and then try to take your, uh, your natural. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think if I were like faster getting stuff behind that, it actually may have been playable. But at, at that point, like I was dead because the lings are just going to come in and kill me. But yeah. Honestly, yeah, I, th that game was right after I played Roman, and I was so demoralized. I was like, hopefully Erdman just goes 12 hatch because he likes to play macro, and I just get a free win. Like, that was my entire thought process. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Have you been doing the uh, 9 hatch thing a lot lately, Erdman? Uh, yeah, I've been goofing around with it. Uh, it's... If you're going for more of a macro style, it doesn't actually really help you with that. It's more of just like kind of the early game shenanigans that uh, helps prevent it. And usually in series, people tend to cheese in the first game. So it's like kind of one of those like catch all builds where I can still macro out of it. I'm not too behind. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I'm also in a good spot if he tries to do something aggressive. Yeah, it, it seems nice in ZVP too because, uh, like, it allows you to, you know, you'll get your lings like a few seconds faster than if you did like 11 hatch or 12 hatch. So like, you can completely shut down any zealot pressure. Um, it, it's like basically impossible for them to cannon rush you. So like, that, that's one issue I always had with like 11 hatches. If I went like you know, hatch first against like a forge opening, then like dealing with getting cannon rushed always really sucks. We got a we got a nine pull from Erdmon this time. It's your boy. Yeah, like everything feeds proxy gates. Say what? Yeah, flying posted everything feeds proxy gates in chat. <laughs> Yeah, proxy gates are just a high risk, low reward <laughs> strategy. Alright, double cannon. Good play. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, with the, the, the nine hatch thing, it does. It, it also seems nice. It's like, obviously, it's not going to be as as good as like a regular hat first in terms of like transferring into a macro game but ooh. oh okay yeah i um totally forgot about those links <laughs> <laughs> i yeah. was very surprised you i so i was wondering what happened because i was like i can't believe he like tried to run that in i, I surprised myself <laughs> <laughs> well you know you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. Yeah. Thanks, Wayne Gretzky. <laughs> uh, yeah, as a Zerg player, that's like a nightmare scenario, though, because then you have to like make another set of wings at least. So yeah. Like, the scout and stuff. But yeah, with the um, going back to the nine hatch thing, it's like at least you'll have extra larva too, so it's not like you'll be completely screwed by yeah. transferring into a normal game. That's how, like, Kaido was explaining it to me when I was watching a stream the other night. It's that, like, like, you know, Zealot kind of came up with this, these openings, right? But, like, obviously he uses them in a very cheesy way, but you don't have to, to play exactly like Zealot. You can just mm -hmm. use it as, like, a really safe opening. You uh, play whatever style you feel like. Yeah, Larva Economy, it's, uh, it's definitely a thing. The more you have, the better it is. Yeah, it's what makes Zerg so different macro-wise from Terran mm -hmm. and Protoss. It's like kind of unintuitive, for, especially for beginner players. Fuck, 
fucking probes. <laughs> the thing is, like, my Corsair ends up being a little bit late, like, normally. Doing, uh, like, this is the first time I ever went to Cannon before Nexus. And it oh, really? feels kind of gross, like, how late you end up getting, like, your Nexus and your gas and everything, res like, respectively because of that. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't feel great. Yeah, this is an extremely late start. <clears throat> well, at this point, I was actually making a decision to... Oh, you're just going, going for it. Even though I saw the lair. So here's here's what I was thinking. Um, it was going to leave, and I was going to make the Citadel right outside of his vision. But I guess I didn't even do that. He saw it because of the lingering vision. So it comes back to confirm. Um, yeah, it's like that Overlord is going to die anyway, so you might as well. So, I decide, well, he's going to be making me up anyway. Let's do like a weird mass goon yeah. build instead. Oh, okay. <laughs> Protoss logic. <laughs> um, yeah. Kind of late. Yeah, it is late, yeah. yeah and and uh, <laughs> it's late, but we're going for, for the surprise factor, okay? Yeah, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's fair. The only issue is that those gateways aren't finished, and the spire is. It's fine. Yeah, it'll be fine. It's okay. <laughs> it's just the, the, the picture of that dog in the house that's on fire. I think of that all the time, yeah. I always say this is fine, thinking of that. <laughs> but yeah, I feel like, uh, I mean, the, the, the two gate goon or two base goon thing, you have like, God, I, I wish I knew the actual build. I know like TT1 used to do like really precise, like early game two base goon timings, and it mm -hmm. was like really hard to deal with, but. I don't actually know, like, I assume you have to, like, cut probes and... Yeah, I don't know the build either. I know that it is a build, and I, I know I wasn't doing the build. I was doing my own version, uh, and my whole version was thinking, I like Dragoons. <laughs> well, it starts with that, you know, that's the first ingredient. <laughs> I went for basically two all-ends, two games in a row, because... Uh... I just mentally wasn't wasn't there after the Vermin games. I thought maybe I could get some free cheap wins and then we'd go from there, you know? I mean, see, this is still kind of scary from a Zerg perspective. I mean... Especially because, like, when, when you're... When you're going mutiling against this sort of thing, it's like... The Dragoons can just, like, step back and fire, step back and fire, so it feels like it's really hard sometimes to, like, properly catch them. But, uh... Well, what if you don't micro at all? Not, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> then what? It, it, then this happens. Well, actually, you're you're kind of cleaning it, up. cleaning up his army. See, this is really scary. So, like, it's going to be so hard to, like, dig you out of this position now. I yeah, like I, I feel like one thing that would have made it a lot harder for me is that these Sunkens were, like, more forward, so I was fighting into the Sunkens at the same time. Yeah, but th this is the bad part of taking that position, right? So now mm -hmm. you're just stuck there.
what, what was going through your mind at this point? Or... Protoss is so easy. Yeah. <laughs> what I needed to do was just cut off his reinforcements and go with the uh, the swell afterwards. But like I was yeah. saying, I it's uh, because I put the uh, fifth hatchery north of my third. Uh, it reduced like the sunken coverage. Uh -huh. So had I taken it to where the new macro hatch is being placed, I would have been in a better spot. But yeah, you know, chalk it up to shit creep. <laughs> yeah, I was I was going to mention putting off the reinforcements because like a while ago, like like a minute or so ago, I saw you. Hey, you know, I saw Camille. Like that was what you're going to do. I mean, I go the what I'm supposed to do, but it still doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah, it, just in general, like as a general principle, like whether it's against Protoss or Terran or whatever, if they're doing this kind of like two base all in or whatever, you know, you can like it. it this is how I play against Mech too, where it's like, all right, the glass are out on the map. I'm just gonna like make them an island and go cut off like any reinforcements. Mm -hmm. So like, I'll keep building up my army, but you're never gonna build up yours. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much the logic, but uh, just couldn't get there because uh, the pressure at the third and the sunken placements just kind of boned me. So I was like, well, this is a lost game. So yeah. Yeah, once the goons get to this critical mass, it's so hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Flying nailed it. I <clears throat> uh, said Ozzy's really playing like a BGH for this game. Absolutely yeah. what I was doing. <laughs> Bring him on BGH to the ladder. Yeah, sometimes you just gotta get back to your roots. Yeah. Make a bunch of workers and start massing dragoons. You may not like it, but this is what peak Protoss performance looks like. True, though. So true. So stupid. This really is the most Protoss build ever. Yeah. Honestly, this is... When I play Koozie, this is how I want to fucking play, because, like... I'm too dumb and slow to use High Templar effectively. Like, I want to just pound units into the, the Zerg and just go AFK. <laughs> I was gonna say you sound sad, King. <laughs> this is player that hurts my soul. Just clawing at whatever I can right now. Yeah, it's one thing. It's one thing if you lose like a normal macro ZVP or whatever, but when you lose it something like this, it's just like, oh, so that's how it is. Yeah. The thing is, I lost a semi just recently to this exact build. Well, like, even though I can sniff it out, it's still just a strong fucking build. <laughs> Because once again, larva, you just don't have the larva to really like be impactful. It's like you, you need time, and this build definitely doesn't give you the time. I'm the Ermon did forget to say GG, but I know it's he simply forgot, just like Moonride happens to the best of us. I didn't hear any of the last like 30 seconds or so. I had just said that. Ermon forgot to say GG, he did not do it on purpose, so nobody give him a oh, hard yeah. time. <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> Damn, I think uh, it's, it's like 420 already. I think we might have to postpone our uh, pizza match. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. That's good, because I already had pizza today. Oh, nice. <laughs> I actually completely forgot about that. So, how many more uh, sets after this? Um, It's this one, and then yours and Vermin, and that's it. 
Oh, okay. At least the ZVZ should be quick. Mm -hmm. And painful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So again, this is another map where I feel like I have to go Forge Expand. And I don't necessarily have to, but like covering that ramp kind of sucks. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, there are the uh, the eggs there, right? There's the eggs, but it still takes... You still want like two or like kind of three probes, to be honest, because there's so much surface area for the probes and everything that it just kind of sucks. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I um oh so Herb, have you have you had much experience playing like nine hatch or ten hatch against uh, Forge? Uh, no, not really. I'm just wondering how it works out if like you need to uh, essentially go like like a three minute gas and kind of go into like nine seven three sort of thing, or if you. Can I feel like that'd like... be more uh, advantageous for that uh, the early hatch because you got to think the the larva once again. Uh, yeah. Get those extra drones out faster, which means you're able to get to that nine seven three faster, which would be a sharper timing. Yeah, and I was also thinking if you go for like a two thirty two forty minute like gas, then maybe you're not going to have enough like mineral input to really take advantage of the faster larva. So like, if you go for like a normal like three hatch layer into a spire build then like you're kind of going to be gimping yourself a little bit yeah but you can also if you uh try to go for the layer um you, if you delay your gas a little bit you can get that overlord before you get the layer which will help with the boost of uh supply. Uh, yeah. so yeah yeah i, I mean, guess there's ways to work out of it it's just trying to find the path that fits the best yeah yeah, and if you hide overlords and stuff, or maybe like lose one overlord, then it's not the end of the world. Yeah, I mean, uh, if I know that my uh, spire timing's behind the uh, Stargate, like significantly, I'll always just like at the uh, 35, as opposed to throwing down the hatchers real quick, I'll just throw in uh, like how many overlords I think I'm going to lose, like right off rip. So mm -hmm. I can kind of like counter that with the, what I got. That's cool. I'm glad there's still, like, novel openings that are being developed. Yeah. I mean, I feel like this game, it's so figured out that it's like, uh... Like, it's not so much of the opener, but what you'd follow it up with. Yeah, like and, and it, it, like, I guess there's nothing truly new under the sun, but it's like, things are way more optimized than they used to be. And then someone comes in with like a 2005 build and just blows everyone away. <laughs> like, holy shit! You did a four Goliath dropship! <laughs> this man's a genius! But, I feel like stuff like that is more viable for like Terran and Protoss. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't feel like Zerg has a lot of room for like creativity, to be honest. Yeah. No, it's pretty much because the whole larva thing, you commit to that one unit, you're kind of locked into that one unit. You can't build stuff simultaneously. So, and just dude, freaking, I feel like Zerg would be way better if we could cancel larva and they'd go back to larva as opposed to dying. Oh yeah, for because sure. you can like That'd turn, yeah, you could turn the all ins off or vice versa. It should make it that when you cancel an egg, it splits into two larva. Oh, the abuse that would come from that. <laughs> That'd be beautiful. That'd be like turning uh, two hatch hot or muta into like a three hatch. Like split your larva, then make mutas. Oof. How about this? You cancel the egg, but you don't get the resources back and it splits into two larva. Yeah, okay. So you're making a 50 mineral investment yeah, for yeah. larva.
That's cool. <laughs> I'm down for that patch. <laughs> I would probably break Zerg. Uh, God, I hope Blizzard never patches Brutal Earth. <laughs> no, it's, it's highly doubt it. Perfect yeah. the way it is. It's still being like changed and developed now, right? Like the game is still being figured out. Yeah. It's just a nightmare scenario, though. There should be five zealots instead of four, but we I'm have four. I'm kind of surprised you're committing to this, but that's what I was thinking. I committed to it thinking that he would think that I wouldn't commit to it. That was the entire yeah. thought process. Well, because I, I fake the push out all the time, right? Like, and I know people yeah. know that I'm doing that constantly. So I was like, well, let me make it look like a fake, but then we're actually just going to go. Well, yeah, it's because like if he had made like six more lings or whatever. Yeah, it just gets crushed. Yeah, then it's a complete waste. So I, I definitely tried to metagame a little bit there. Yeah. Threw me off because I was like, this is such a crucial timing because this is where like Zerg throws down like, you know, the, the macro hatches, the tech. Yeah. And it just, this like blunders everything so hard. Like I'm 1k stack and I'm just not cleaning up your zealots. So just their presence alone fucking hurt. Yeah, this kind of happened to me. Um, I, I played a semi for a CPL this season, and like I lost 2 0 against him, but like both games, like he did like a timing push with like five zealots or whatever, like right as I was supply blocked 27. And like I just got absolutely like demolished because I, I, I like my overlords were a little late, and then I didn't like keep supply to deal with the potential zealots, so it's like. Oh god, what a humiliation. It's like the, the oldest trick in the book, but... Still works. Like, yeah. Just get absolutely demolished by, like... A, a, like, four-minute timing. Gotta love it. It's almost as cool as six marines pushing you, or uh, pushing a natural and killing every drone. Oh, yeah. Zergs really need to learn how to wall. Oh wait, all the opponents have got ranged units. Uh. <laughs> I mean, you guys, you get the wall against the zealots at least. The stop zealot pressure. You get that. I don't see pros really like optimizing their walls like they used to. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of awkward on like maps like this where there's that there's like unbuildable rocks at the uh top near the, the choke like can you really get a great sim city on this map i'm not even sure but i i haven't really played on it too much you know there's one guy out there who's like made a perfect wall on every side <laughs> of every map yeah it's amazing how much people will obsess over really like small details uh. like there's this zerg there's this green zerg I'm sure he's not bad, but he's not like, you know, top level or anything. But he just like he has a YouTube channel where like all he posts are like videos of the most optimized mining, where it's like two seconds faster than like any other fucking person on earth. But like, yeah. like that's like all he does though. He just optimizes mining. It's his thing. I feel like I, I took the or attempted to take top right. I think I should have went for nine o'clock. I know it's not good to like expand towards a Protoss, but like closing that choke. Those chokes, like if you get it set up, though, is actually so hard to break, though. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I feel like that would have actually been the better decision. Yeah. Kind of like the amazing thing of like retro, right? Where you can expand like towards the Protoss on that map as well. Mm -hmm. But it's like if you get that base, it just becomes a nightmare for Protoss because they they like lose an attack path. Yep. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> 
And for the first time in the history of Ozzy playing PvZ, he has Corsair still alive at this stage in the game to protect his High Templar. My storms were definitely too far behind my zealots though. But it's because Herbo's doing like a pretty good job of like running backwards as well, and then I was letting my zealots go too far forward. Yeah, that was a really nice arc by Herb. But I also just didn't have a lot of supply there, honestly. Like I was only up like 15 supply. I feel like I have such a hard time knowing how to trade against Zerg while they're droning. Like, we're even on workers, which is pretty good for Zerg, yeah? Yes. Or is 48 still a yeah. little bit too low, maybe? Or is that okay? Uh, uh, 48 be. is fine for now. Um, once you get to, like, once you get the fourth base up, you want to aim for, like, 65 or so. Yeah. But, I mean, Herb is in, like, a really good spot right now. I mm -hmm. mean, anytime you're, like, close to the same supply as Protoss, you're, like, sitting pretty. Damn, seeing that you didn't have storms at this... I thought uh, I was dead. Like, if you just pulled the yeah. trigger, I would have died. When you didn't, yeah. I was like, oh, thank God. <laughs> yeah, but it's like... How, yeah, how do you know? Like, yeah, no, there's no way you should know. Or you, you wouldn't know. Has storms, right? <laughs> I didn't realize no. until the fight ended that I didn't have any more behind it. Now I remember this game. Damn it. Do, you, do they all get spotted by that single zealot? <laughs> yeah. Just wait and find out. <laughs> oh god, nightmare. I had it there specifically for drop because I've I've noticed Armand using drop play a lot more than I feel like he used to, and I actually feel like it's very hard to deal with. Like if you don't see it coming, you can just lose the game immediately. Yeah. This uh, Herb, you, I, I don't know if you saw any of the games yesterday, but man, this this reminds me of uh, when the ZVTs flying was playing against uh, Nash, where like he was going for a lurker ling drop. And uh, I, I have no idea how Nesh sniffed it out. I think he must have seen, like, Warlords with uh, fucking, like, speed or something. But, like, he ended up, like, reacting perfectly to it. And it was just, like, I, I've never seen a drop fail that spectacularly. Like, <laughs> Nesh saw, like, the complete perfect time. And it just got it like that. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, when that drop gets spotted, it hurts. I was thinking I should have, um just left them there and just waited for Ozzy to push out and then go for the drop. Yeah. But, but then he still has that stare. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. I just pull back and unload a no board and, you know, fend yeah. it off. But the threat's still there. Yeah. Yeah. I just was like, I'm going to pull the trigger. Sometimes you just got to go. Mm -hmm. At this point, I was just like, all right, I just need to be crazy and just try to fucking build a shit ton of hydras and hopefully I can crush him. But I know he's on floor base, so I'm like, I'm just in a bad spot. <laughs> so I got to I gotta do something. Yeah, I mean, again, there's no way you can know this, but like maybe there's still a little bit of a window because like he is just now getting that like that a similar at his third just finished and he hasn't started mining from it yet, so... He hasn't really gotten that, like, infinite High Templar engine going. Yeah. But, yeah, I don't know. Like, let's see how many storms he... Oh, he only has, like, one storm right now. True. I think this Lurker drop at 6 gets a lot of kills, too. I wonder if, like, a, if a Lurker... On the left side of that ridge by the uh, mineral only, I wonder if like they could hit. No, not too bad. Like, and yeah, okay, probably. Drop lurkers behind it though. 
I mean, well, you, you are dropping lurkers behind the fourth. That's sick. Once again, I should have just pulled back once I saw the army. I just felt so committed. I haven't looked at this. I don't even know if I ever see this fight in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I I was do. happy about that. I was like, <laughs> alright, cool. I don't even know where I was looking for that. This is, there's three things going on right now. I got the Lurker drop at 6 o'clock. I got the drop on my main and then this fight in the middle. My yep. measly 160 Protoss APM can't keep up with it. Damn, I heard 360, 370 APM from Mad Man. Trying, dog. Like this in my brain, I was just like, I need to be everywhere. So I just didn't worry about anything other than just five sh, six sh, seven sh. I don't think I've ever gotten to four hundred APMs. <laughs> you just hold down one button and it'll uh, well, it. Yeah, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, using that, I've gotten to like twelve hundred, I guess, but. <laughs> Ooh, the lurker surround. Don't matter. No, this matters. Damn. Yeah, yeah I, I was I was hoping that I would like somehow just like erase the protons from you. But... It is Terran, different story. Yeah. Keen, I feel like you're kind of playing favorites a little bit here. I'm sorry. I, I can't <laughs> help it. I have to support my Zerg brethren. I don't have a brethren. That's the problem. I hate Protoss players. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I was a Protoss player, I would also hate Protoss players. Yeah. Who the fuck wants to play PvP constantly? I hate PvP and I hate the way I see them playing on ladder. They like disgust oh, yeah. me. Yeah, ladder Protoss or something else. Got the 302 upgrades here as well. Pretty big. I was kind of in a position where I had to get a lot of damage done here, though, because my I'm mine down on my two bases now, and yeah, but Herb has a lot of map. Yeah, but it's kind of deceptive, I think. Like the nine o'clock isn't really a base. The uh, the natural at top right isn't really a base right now. Mm-hmm. I just didn't like if I, I I feel like if I tried to like chill and like go to another base or something, I think I'd just get overwhelmed. Yeah. Like I felt like this was the best chance for me to go. Mm hmm You are correct. I may not know how to play StarCraft, but my gut told me it's time to attack. It's that killer instinct. <laughs> That's gotta be it. Oh, that was terrible. And Ozzy Dahaki takes an unexpected 2-1 victory after the uh, the first 9-9 Radeon game. Damn, Furman splits are so good. I did not see these games. I know they were streamed, but I didn't see them. Ian, how do you feel about ZVZ? Um... I don't particularly enjoy it. Strangely, I feel like it's not 
my worst matchup when I'm inactive. Um, because I can still like eke out build order wins, so I guess I kind of like it in that regard. <laughs> yeah. But um. But yeah, generally speaking, it's like I don't know. I don't hate it because it's like at least the games are usually over fairly quickly. That's everybody's take. I, I don't agree with that take. I hear that all the time though. So it's a are pretty. Doing... Oh, is this a ten hatch herb? Yeah, I was playing around with the. Um... The ten hatch in uh, the series. Oh, I think I did it for this game, game, and it was just like, yeah, let's see what happens. That's rough getting scouted first. <laughs> I know, dude. Oh my god, is he gonna go for a fucking twelve hatch or eleven hatch? Okay. Uh, is eleven hatch supposed to be like safe or like? against cool first yeah oh okay damn i haven't been keeping up with the fucking meta that's hard to believe though i mean i i feel like it would still i feel like if i was doing it, it would, i would still die to a nine pool well your pool timing's just 50 minerals faster is this yeah and then usually how it works is if they nine pool speed you you're morphing the lings as soon as the wings are hitting your natural. So uh, okay. that few seconds does amount to something. And then you just pull your drones to buy a little bit of time. This is relatively yeah. vermin favored, right? This opener? Oh yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. No, he's way ahead now. This is like nightmare scenario when you're going ten hatch. Yeah. This is this where. Build... What? Oh, sorry. Go on. I was gonna say this is where I uh, scout his main and realize that he went twelve hatch and just do a deep sigh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like Fuck. the only saving grace here is that Herb also scouted him first, which usually isn't the case on most maps. Um... Oh, that's true. This is. I didn't even think realize that this map is. Um... It actually makes the Zerg scout the same direction. Yeah. So, like, normally speaking, it's like... Herb wouldn't have realized he wouldn't hatch first. Mm -hmm. But, um... Yeah, like, going 11 hatch or 12 hatch against this is, like, pretty much the best possible response. Then also getting that scouting information first, it's just, like, uh... Irredeemable. I mean, what I'm looking at doesn't look that bad for Mon right now. Like, we're up a couple workers, we have the sunken for safety. Our lair's a little bit quicker, we've mined a little bit more gas. Yeah. Maybe he went speed, yeah, yeah. Well, it's just because I was able to, uh, scout him out. I mm -hmm. was able to make a round of drones. Which, uh, brought me back into it. Yeah, those, those first three drones were pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, I'm actually surprised that Vermin is still just pumping lings, but... Yeah, a lot of ling were going speed. Vermon's dipping speed, playing defensive with the Sunken. Oh god. Okay, well you're not too supply blocks. But he's going in just like the perfect storm. Damn. Yeah, that... Wow, the uh, Sunken actually like soaked up a lot of damage there, but I guess it just wasn't enough. Maybe if the drone pool was like a little bit faster, but I would have thought that I would be able to hold that from your position here. Yeah, I actually thought like looking at it. Yeah, I thought too. <laughs> it's actually funny, like sitting here watching it. I was like, this actually to me looks really good for Herb. Yeah, not anymore. Not looking great now. Dare I say. Yeah. So, going Scourge. Scourge with no Muta support is rough. I mean... 
And I didn't have speed. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so he'll have three mutas and, let's see, two sets of Scourge. I think three mutas is still like, oh, okay. Yeah, you're, you're boned. Sorry. I forgive you. That's rough. It is what it is. ZBZ, baby. <laughs> I also, I guess one thing in, in ZBZ's favor, too, is like, I don't really take the losses personally because it's just like, well, it's fucking ZBZ. Like, yeah, it's just one of those things where it's like, it's like, like two lanes can end the whole game. Mm -hmm. So. Okay, Vermin gets a GG at least. Good for Vermin. Because I respect him. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's not, I, the game's great. It's a fun one. Just fun to bitch. Yeah. It's, a, it's an easy way to vent. Uh, yeah, for sure. That's actually what I try to explain to people all the time. Like, when I'm complaining about things, like if I'm complaining about lag or latency or, like, teammates doing, like, stupid things or bad things, it's not that I'm unhappy per se, it's really a coping mechanism to help keep me calm. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's that's literally all it is. Like, if I utter these magical words, I just suddenly feel better. Yeah. And it's like, alright, cool. Yeah, yeah or, if, or if I'm complaining about how fucking bullshit ZVT is and how fucking easy it is for Terran, you know, I'm not I'm not actually saying that it's like imbalanced or impossible for Zer to win. Yeah. I know it fucking is. Fuck Terran. Yeah, fuck Terran, dog. <laughs> Bullshit. I'm gonna just bunker rush. Oh, I completely failed? Good thing I got a wall and one yeah, marine could, against your 12 I, I, links. I could just go 8 racks for, yeah. like, fucking no downside. Wall on every fucking map. If I don't if I don't go 8 racks, I can just go fucking plus one 5 racks against two fucking hatch muta. Yeah. <laughs> this is so funny listening to this. I was on a Saiyan stream the other day, Saiyan SC, <clears throat> and, um... He was complaining. Uh, he's been having having rough times on the ladder. Yeah. And I said something about how I was like gonna full swap to Terran, and it kind of reminded me of like when I was originally talking to Terran players, and Terran players were always like, "You're gonna be miserable when you play TVP. Like you're gonna learn to hate yourself and hate the game and this and that and like just how BS it all is." And then I tell Saiyan, I'm like, "Yeah, I'm thinking of swapping to Terran." And then Terran, and he's like, "Oh, so you're just gonna play Terran? You're not gonna learn the man's race of Zerg and and learn what it is to be miserable?" And I was like, "Guys." <laughs> Everybody can't be miserable. Like, everybody can't be the worst race. Well, um... There's this old... Go ahead. Oh, sorry. There's this old screenshot I used to have of, like, um... Periador, Liquid Drone. I, I think... I'm sure you know who he is, or but, um... Yeah. He was, like, describing how he viewed the, the general players of each race, and he's like... You know, the Protoss are, like, successful in real life, and they pick the easy race, and it's like, um, fucking Terran players are all fucking nerds, and then he's, he's like, Zerg players are, are like, addiction prone. Wait, were you making a <laughs> so, yeah. That <laughs> I think that's that's how it is, you know, we just turn to drugs. Yeah. <laughs> Sus uh, substance abuse runs in yeah. our, uh, our <laughs> hive. Were you making, you were making a third hatchery, weren't you? Yes, I was. <laughs> I was trying full autism on this and it did not work Dude, that that was like a real common thing on on ladder for a while like everyone was going like three hatch bling and it was actually kind of fucking hard to deal with if you didn't like immediately win yeah there, there's ways to play out of it um lurkers are definitely useful but uh yeah it's it's definitely weird and that's kind of what i was hoping to be able to throw a vermin into but uh him just Doing what he's doing right here kind of sucks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's like, idea. Yeah, I was like, well, I'm boned. <laughs> Goodbye, pool. Yeah. At this point, I was just like, All right, I'm going to just make do with what I got. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, make him fight for it. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, this is playable. Not at all. Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> well, let's wait and see what the sunken <laughs> value is here. Sunken <laughs> value isn't worth much for this hatch in the main. It's got yeah. three, it's got like three kills right now. 
with 75 minerals. Battle drones, go! <laughs> yeah, with proper drilling. Look, another Ling kill. All right. Gonna get another one here? Actually, it's gonna get two more. Nope. Oh, it's gonna be three. Wow, we're, we're, value. we're at, uh, what is that, seven Ling kills right now? It's almost paid for itself. You know, you're not even trying to rebuild the pool. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm literally just goofing. I'm like, just build more battle drones. <laughs> if if you were making like if you were against Protoss, that was massing goon. Unironically, massing like continuing tons of SCVs for fighting is so good against your goon. Yeah, it must be nice to have peons who can actually like turn the tide of a game. Right. Yeah, Fifty-five health. That's pretty dope. Just like sixty. Never die. Oh, they, get like, oh, they, get, they get stormed like three times in a row and they're still just like sitting there fine. Yeah, it takes a dragoon six shots to kill an SCV. God, that's gross. <laughs> well, I guess Vermin takes it. Yeah, Vermin takes the 2-0 over Ermon and the 2-1 over me, Ozzy the Hockey, so he gets to move on and he's playing against... Uh, I think I said it. Did I say it yesterday? Uh, he's playing against Semi, I think. Semi, yeah. 